Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Very important website I want to get out to you right now before we even introduce today's guest, and that is thembeforeus.com. Thembeforeus.com. Com. Friends, family in Christ, thank you so much for tuning into Worldview Matters, for sharing the podcast. Our guest today is Katie Faust, founder and president of Them Before Us. It's a global movement defending children's right to their mother and father. She publishes, speaks, and testifies widely on why marriage and family are matters of justice for children. Um, Katie helped design the teen edition of Canavox, which studies sex, marriage, and relationships from a natural law perspective. She detailed her philosophy of worldview transmission in her book, Raising Conservative Kids in a Woke City. And she and her husband are raising their four children in Seattle. That's the woke city, one of too many in the country. And her brand new book, which we're going to focus on today, is called Pro-Child Politics. Pro-Child Politics. And it was published just last month, so it is hot off the presses. Katie Faust, welcome to Worldview Matters. Hey, it's great to be with you. I've been enjoying listening to your episodes and your guests and very much appreciate you bringing the Christian worldview into all different areas of culture, especially in this election season. Oh, my goodness. And Katie, as we talked briefly before we got on the podcast, it has been a battle and it's a spiritual battle at its core. But even the battle in America with apathy and elections, people not understanding the God given right we have that most countries around the world don't have that yeah. we can actually have a say in who represents us and what happens from the federal level all the way down to the local level. So we're going to talk about that when we get to your book, Pro-Child Politics. But I want to just go over to your website, thembeforeus.com. What's your story, Katie? How did you get involved with this? And what, uh, what happened in your life that maybe led you to found Them Before Us? Go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just a stay-at-home mom with four kids. My husband is uh, has been the pastor of our church here in Seattle for 14 years and just recently has transitioned to becoming a full-time Navy chaplain. So I was just buried in ministry and mom work and friendships and community building and praying and Bible reading and all of that until, until the world came for the kids. And that's when I snapped. Because I'm pretty agreeable on that truth teller, grace giver spectrum that all Christians fall on somewhere. I'm a grace giver. I don't like to lose my friends. I didn't want to get into the most contentious cultural topics that we are facing today, except when you victimize children, I get angry. Hmm. And unfortunately, there is very few ways that our culture is not victimizing children today. So I saw that the most acutely in the marriage and family debate around gay marriage. And then I very quickly realized that children are being victimized in every area of family, not just the redefinition of marriage, but also reproductive technologies, how we think and talk about divorce, the rise of cohabitation, the pushing, the normalizing of polygamy and polyamory. And then it went beyond that. You know, now we're seeing children victimized, not just in their life from abortion, but we're seeing them victimized in their lives via things like big fertility and IVF. It's mm -hmm. victimizing children's innocence, their mind through radical innocence, violating sex ed curriculum and pornographic library books and drag queen story hour. It's victimizing their bodies by pushing so-called transgender treatments on gender confused children that harms them for life in ways that we've really never seen in our species really since the pagan days. And so that is what pushed me to get into this mm. space is somebody needs to formally advocate on behalf of children. So if I do my job well, David, that is what you're going to hear today. It is going to be an accurate representation of the rights, well-being and interests of children in every area that we discuss. Praise God. Thank you so much for getting off the bench and into the game, Katie. And uh, thank you for the work that your voice. It's important because so many Christians are either apathetic, they're not paying attention. Oh, if it doesn't concern my child, because maybe they've been out of school and they've graduated, but they're not obviously concerned about their neighbor's children then because of what's happening at the government schools, K through 12, universities. But let's go back to the sentence under about us on thembeforeus.com. And I'm thinking, okay, back up and try to look at this from our grandparents' perspective or our great-grandparents. 
Them before us protects every child's right to their mother and father by educating lawmakers, media influencers, and concerned citizens about the harm children suffer when those rights are violated. So let's stop right there. One of those rights, obviously, is the transgender push, confusing them about who they are. Uh, they're, they're not made in the image of God because there is no God, right? That's according to the left and the Marxists and those who want to uh, get young children and uh, confuse them and maybe get them into the transgender lifestyle. So speak to that for a moment because we're at a very dangerous time in history where there's so much propaganda and lies out there that are not being refuted. And that's probably one of the things that you're trying to do that I'm trying to do. But go ahead and speak to that for a moment, Katie. Well, simply the what we are doing at them before us is putting them, the children before us, the adults. Most of our work has focused on marriage and family issues, but the reality is on all of the supposed culture war topics, they're actually not about the culture necessarily, and they're certainly not primarily political issues. All of these can boil down to child protection. Are you protecting kids or are you victimizing them? And so that is the lens through which we look at all of these major issues, whether we're talking about the election year, whether we're talking about conversations around our dining room table, whether we're talking about you know, posting on X. We think that all of these issues come down to, are you going to advance justice on behalf of the least of these, or are you going to victimize them? Because some adult wants something. And we think that that is a wholly unbiblical argument. We look at, you know, most of our work is from the perspective of natural law, social science. We catalog the stories of children, especially who have been impacted by family breakdown and mother or father loss. But this is a fundamentally Christian mission. Why is that? Because in our biblical corpus, what we see is the God of the universe, the very strongest of all coming down and sacrificing himself for the weakest among us. And then he tells us to go and do likewise. You will not find one biblical exhortation anywhere in the Old or New Testament telling you that the weak should sacrifice for the strong. It is always the other way around. It is always the strong who sacrifice for the weak. But in all of these cultural topics, we are doing the exact opposite. We are yeah. forcing children to sacrifice for adults, and very often they are harmed for life as a result. Preach it. Thank you. Um, so I told on the you website, we have a good time, man. Yeah, I'm telling hey. you, I won't, I won't bore you. Hey, usually I warn people at the top of the podcast, fasten your seatbelts. But um, since this is your first time with us, Katie, I'm getting to know you and, and just praise God for your passion. Over at your website, before we get to your book, pro-child politics at thembeforeus.com. You've got resources for churches, companies, fast facts. Tell us about the resources for churches, because talk about an institution that has unfortunately not been engaged and not spoken out against the evils and the uh, attacks on children. Um, so tell us about the resources for churches. Well, the main focus of that is to take the core of our work, looking at every marriage and family issue through the lens of child protection. And that is the one resource we have that takes our natural law, social science, statistics, the stories and testimonies of children who have experienced mother and father loss and family breakdown and layers biblical truth throughout the entire thing. And what you're going to have when you walk away from this is seeing through these seven part videos that we you know, furnish you with like leader guides and um, participant guides, when you're going to walk away from this, you know what you're gonna say about God's design for sex and marriage? You're not necessarily primarily going to say, oh, this is an object lesson, lesson of his relationship to the church. You're not first gonna say, oh, this is a sacred institution. You are going to say, God's design for sex and marriage is plan A for child protection. And should you Christian waver, compromise, slide, or simply prefer silence above speaking up on behalf of children in these critical areas, just be very honest about what you're doing. You're preferring social acceptance over child protection. And people, participants, Christians specifically, will walk away from doing this curriculum feeling so confident and joyous at God's design for the family because you will never get child thriving without it. It is plan A for advancing the well-being of children. And every little jot or tittle that we choose to carve off, whether it's because we fail to be unclear or simply it's social cowardice, we're simply making kids pay the price for our unwillingness to speak clearly and boldly about what God has made and what he has ordained in relation to the family. So what we hope is that we will bring incredible clarity and confidence for people who are battling not just with God made Adam and Eve and he made them to get married, but 
how do I respond to the lesbians next door who are raising the seven-year-old sperm donor kid? What about my own marriage that is struggling? How do I deal with people that are dealing with infertility and considering using a surrogate? The answer to all of those questions are put kids first. Hmm. That is your first duty. It is not necessarily to empathize with adults who are struggling, which they very often are. Your job as the Christian is to ensure that you are advancing justice and protection for the least of these. It is and always has been a manifestation of our pure and undefiled religion before God. It just looks a little different than it did in the first century. But make no mistake, that is, especially in areas of policy, the number one concern for every believer. Hmm. Before we get to your book, I um, wanted to ask you about this current administration, uh, the Harris-Biden. I mean, the Biden-Harris. Where is Biden anyway? The, the current administration who we know exactly where they stand on issues, all these important issues, life in the womb, but children. And they're, I think, one of the only groups that supports uh, these surgeries for minors, these transgender surgeries for minors, paid for by the U.S. taxpayer. But everyone else, even the average American, I think it's well over 60 some percent. I think you might know the numbers better than me are opposed to these you know, hormones and these surgeries on children, yes. except for this administration. So when it comes to voting in the election coming up, at least from that standpoint, we know where they stand. Speak to that for a moment, please. Well, I think that when you're looking at the cultural issues, okay, and we can spend some time talking about the economic issues, the immigration issues, the national security issues, because we do address those in pro-child pro politics. But when you look at I would say the four primary ways that children's children's rights and well-being are being victimized, life, family, mind, and body. I think the GOP has unfortunately lost some ground on protecting their life. Yeah. And it's a shame. Mm -hmm. It's a crying shame. And we should hold them accountable. I think that they have slidden in terms of children's right to their mother and father. But in terms of protecting children's mind, understanding that a lot of children are being victimized through being forced to go to schools that, A, are not necessarily elevating their genuine education and instead are pursuing indoctrination, oftentimes innocence violating indoctrination. There is a clear choice between the two parties. In terms of victimizing children's bodies related to supposed transgender treatments that do not turn a boy into a girl, they turn a healthy boy into a lifelong consumer of pharmaceuticals and cosmetic surgeons. That's what they do. They turn a healthy child into a patient, a medical patient. In terms of that, we see a very clear divide between the GOP and the current administration. Unfortunately, when you look at children's life, family, mind, and body, the GOP has some work to do. Yes. When you look at children's life, family, mind, and body, what you see is the Democrats and the current administration specifically are the arch enemies of children. Yep, exactly. Anti-biblical worldview. They are not against, they are against the God, male and female, marriage, family, children. Um, so let's see, we should take a break in a minute, but I want to give you an opportunity. I'm thinking you and your husband, one flesh, I... I can't imagine there being a lot of churches that are not woke in your area in Seattle. What's the name of your church, your husband's church, or God's church that your husband is pastoring? Uh, yeah. Share that for our audience and, and the website. Yeah, the church that we still attend, even though he's no longer the pastor, he is now um, out to sea quite a bit, serving as a full-time Navy chaplain, which is amazing, and I'm so grateful, and God is Very using cool. him in amazing ways. Um, we attend Grace Church in Grace Seattle, church. in the West Seattle area. Um, and the new pastor that's taken over is a dear friend. And um, the church is absolutely thriving under his leadership. And we're so grateful. Grace Church in Seattle. And by the way, boy, do we need some godly, bold leaders as chaplains in mm -hmm. a messed up military. And we I interview a lot of uh, former veterans and uh, it's just amazing what's going on there. But that's for a whole nother time. We're, when we come back after our brief pause, we're going to talk with Katie about her book, Pro-Child Politics. That's next. Today's show is brought to you by Harbinger's Daily. World news biblically understood. Stay informed at harbingersdaily.com. Friends, because of you... Our Rumble channel is growing, praise God, where we're censored other places or shadow banned. Thank you guys so much for following us on Rumble. And also you can download the free app on your iPhone, Freedom Project Media. 
Rumble, iPhone. Katie Faust is our guest today, them before us, um, dot com, And the book, Pro-Child Politics, it's brand new. Why every cultural, economic, and national issue is a matter of justice for children. So Katie, you, according to the description here over on Amazon, you mobilized a collection of experts who apply their children before adults approach to the areas, their areas of expertise. I see, praise God for Abby Johnson, Dr. Abby Johnson. She's on, on there talking about the issue of life. Just tell us about how this came to be, and I'm, I'm glad this is getting out before the election. Go ahead. Well, we have a little formula here at Them Before Us, and it is put kids first. If you put kids first in matters of marriage and family, you get two things. Number one, you get child thriving. Number two, you get national thriving. Mm. When you put kids first, what you get is individual child protection, and then you also get good policy decisions. There is something about elevating the rights and well-being of the least of these, especially of the next generation, that tends to lead to the right personal decisions and the right policy outcomes. So we do that on all matters of marriage and family at Them Before Us. But I've long hypothesized, because, and I actually see that in the social space as well, when you're looking at the social issues, the, in terms of like social conservatism, you see that as well. When you put children's right to an intact, unmedicalized body at the forefront, you get the right personal decisions in terms of a child who's questioning their gender, but also you ban transgender surgeries state after state after state after state. Mm. So we have wondered if you can actually do this on all major political issues. Maybe the other two legs of the conservative stool, not just the social conservatives, but the economic conservatives and the national security conservatives. And the crazy thing is, when you put them before us, you again get great policy. As Molly Hemingway wrote and the blurb at the beginning is a funny thing happens when you elevate children before adults <laughs> and all of these issues, you get conservatism, but not cold, faceless conservative. You get pure pure distilled conservatism with the face of a child on it. And that's exactly what we've got here. So I conscripted these 19 subject matter experts on topics ranging awesome. from the environment to energy, to immigration, to ESG, DEI, education, pornography, masculinity, femininity. And I mean, these guys are top of the line. You know, Ken Harrison, the president of Promise Keepers wrote our masculinity chapter and, and Peachy Keenan, you know, of domestic extremist fame, wrote our femin femininity chapter. And the head of the only conservative environmental organization, Chris Barnard, wrote our, our environment chapter. I mean, like, it's just a star-studded cast. Yeah. But I told them all, I need you to follow a specific formula. I want you to begin with the real-life story of a child who's harmed because we believed progressive lies. And then I want you to outline those progressive lies and then make the connection. How are ch kids damaged destroyed or victimized when we believe those lies. Then tell me the truth. Tell me the truth about education or immigration or pornography. Then tell me what would happen if we believe those truths and how kids would be protected. And then show me who has done it. Don't just give me philosophy. I want you to tell me which governor or state or municipality has applied these truths and show me how children have been protected as a result. So it functions as absolutely an understanding of why every issue is ultimately connected to child well-being but it also is a bit of a primer for those of us who maybe don't know a whole lot about energy policy or haven't thought a lot about policing to be like actually all of these things really do come down to is it going to be me am i going to put myself first or is it going to be kids are we going to prioritize them guys you can get this right now at amazon pro child politics and uh, I really encourage you to, to get a hold of this and maybe even share it. Um, Katie, I want to jump to the ESG DEI. I wrote a book um, earlier this year called The Assault on the Image of God. And one of the chapters was the Marxist cult of DEI. Um, this is something that I think caught a lot of people off guard with regards to the education system and even corporations. And, and yeah. this is just spread. Um, Share with us a little bit what Justin Danhoff wrote about ESG, DEI, and how from, from the perspective of putting children first, please. Well, you know, both in terms of the corporate world and in terms of entire governments and in terms of media and the media expression, what we see is ESG is actually the rot at the bottom of so many of the other symptoms that we are mm -hmm. seeing in our world that are 
forcing things to crumble. He talks about how corporations like Disney on, you know, the shoulders of DEI initiatives are pushing some of the most child innocence violating content, you know, overhauling their own the, their concept of the social fabric through a lot of these ESG DEI programming. He begins with the story of a child in Sri Lanka who used to be middle class, but because Sri Lanka has adopted the ESG DEI mandate and has a perfect score, they have plunged their country into poverty and chaos. And he talks very clearly about how the shift in the corporate world away from shareholders to stakeholders has actually been a very powerful force to restitch the social fabric in a way that is distinctly much more Marxist than it is pro-human and pro-child. Mm. So I think that it's an incredible chapter because Justin's a great writer. He's also, you know, was there when Strive was founded, and that's Vivek Ramaswamy's organization. I mean, the man knows what he's talking about. Um, and I just appreciate, you know, at the truth, at the very end where he's talking about the truth, he's like, kids do need ESG, but it's not environmental social governance. It's genuine equality. Um, it is the security of being known and loved by their mother and father, and is the governance of their parents. That's really the ESG that kids need. Well, it's interesting what you just described from the biblical worldview taking care of the children, raising them up in that vein, what you just described. It's like this kind of probably is the thread through all of these, right? The, from what how God ordained it, the family to protect children. And um, every one of these, is there any other one you would like to share? Because we're down to about five minutes or so. Um, what's one of your favorite or maybe one of the chapters that someone contributed that you said, wow, maybe you it floored you. Go ahead. Very hard to narrow down, but I will tell you the one that I learned the most that I think also intersects with what is at the top of the list in terms of mindset pre-election is the immigration chapter. Mm -hmm. Laura Rees wrote the chapter on immigration. She has been doing immigration policy for close to 30 years. She works at the Heritage Foundation. I just did a panel at the Heritage on this, and she's just brilliant. And she makes it very clear that our current immigration policy, the policy of the Biden-Harris administration, has very, very far from being good for immigrants, mm. has actually victimized not just American children who live in this country now, whose resources are being directed away from their critical first services or their educational uh, budgets or whatever, and towards unverified, undocumented immigrants. It's not just bad for American kids. Our current immigration policy is horrible for immigrant kids. The kind of policies around the unaccompanied minor program has allowed for the victimization of hundreds of thousands of children. Just in the last couple of months, it's come out that we have lost. Yes. Health and human services have lost 30,000 to who knows, 300,000 unaccompanied minors. Because honestly, this current administration didn't want the bad photo ops of the kids in cages. So instead, what they did is they handed the children to traffickers. Those 300,000 children that they don't know where they are very likely are in underground brothels and sweatshops here in this country. It is absolute victimization of children, the current immigration policy. And the truth is that we can look at almost all of these topics from debt to national security, to policing, to race. And we see the lies that are coming like a fire hose, not just through our politicians, but through media and through a lot of the main institutions that have been captured by progressivism. The lies harm kids. Mm. Sometimes it takes their lives. Sometimes it starves them of their families. Sometimes it robs them of their innocence. A lot of times it just steals their resources and doesn't allow them the same opportunity that we have been able to have. It's an injustice and yeah. Christians especially have to stand against it. One thing that uh, on the book page, it says uh, these subjects addressed share one commonality. When we believe lies, children are victimized. And that's a key point that you're getting across today. Um, and, and thank you, because there's not a lot of focus when you talk about elections and when you talk about everything that's going on, politics, all these different topics. Not a lot of focus is on the children and how it affects the children. Katie, we've got just about three minutes left. Just whatever's on your heart to share to try to wake up you know, our audience, for the most part, are biblical Christians. They believe the whole counsel of God, Bible-believing Christians. And the, the worldview issue is huge, and we're seeing that play out. So speak to them for a moment just to encourage them to maybe get off the bench and into the game. Well, I imagine a lot of your listeners are absolutely in the game, and I'm so 
grateful. I, you know, we live in Seattle. And so we are in a place that has been sifted, sifted in ways that maybe some of the other parts of the country have not. So I see a lot of courageous Christians, but what they need is they need better information. I see people that want to honor the Lord. I see people that love the word of God, but we right now are in a place in human history that really is unlike any other place that we've been as especially relates to children. We are seeing uh, the death of Christendom, right? The death of so-called cultural Christianity. And you know what happens when, when we no longer see Christ's principles, even if it's not the personal relationship, the principles of Christ ruling and reigning in this country, kids are victimized. Mm. And you understand that that is absolutely the no-go zone for Christians. And so I think a lot of what we need is to be very clear about what child defense looks like in our modern day and age. It absolutely looks like caring for the least of these in our own personal lives. But it also looks like being a voice for them on behalf of the political, on the policy scale. It's not just what's happening in the culture. It's what's happening in the courtroom. And you, Christian, obviously will empathize with friends that are struggling in these areas. But no amount of adult longing, loss, suffering, struggle justifies victimizing kids. You primarily have got to be an advocate for the least of these. And when we fail to do so, we're in millstone around our neck territory, people. So this is a non-negotiable for Christians. We at them for us strive to help you know exactly what to say and how to say it, especially in matters of marriage and family. Pro-child politics is going to help you look at political issues through the lens of putting kids first. But Christians, this is the battle. And the amazing thing is when you secure justice for the least of these you get social justice as well. Mm. When you protect individual children, you will protect the nation. When we, the adults, do hard things on behalf of children, which is what is required, we are going to get everything that we are longing for in terms of national thriving. When we do the hard things, meaning sacrificing for the children, everything else seems to fall into place. And national thriving is... My goodness, we need so much uh, help in this country, but that's a good focus. I think that's great, and you're you're on to something, Katie Faust, and I want to direct people to thembeforeus.com and the book, again, Pro-Child Politics. Uh, Really appreciate your time today, and it was so great after reading about what you were doing and your website and all that you're connected with. Praise God that uh, we were able to do this podcast, so thanks for your time, and God bless you and your work. Thanks so much for having me, David. You're welcome, Katie. All right, guys. Oh, by the way, biblicalvoter.com. I, if I didn't give that out, I do that every time. I voter guide and biblicalvoter.com. It's coming up, friends. And uh, praise God for everybody, every voice that's out there trying to make a difference and make an impact here and be salt and light. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter. <laughs>